it was once said that it's not necessarily the pursuit of happiness, but rather the happiness of pursuit. And I find that really helps me ground myself and keep my head straight when I'm overwhelmed and, and flustered. My name is Nathaniel Norman Shields. I am the sole proprietor and barber at the Folklore Barber and Company. I grew up in a small town called Kilbride, Ontario. I loved skateboarding, snowboarding, hockey, all, all the sports really, um, as well as excelling in all of the creative side and that's really what drew me to the barber side of things. As a kid I loved sketching and drawing, everything to do with music, I'd pick up every instrument and then I saw barbering was just another creative outlet for me and uh, it kind of made sense. A few years ago I got back home from working up in the oil patch in Fort St. John, uh, British Columbia and I was kind of lost, didn't really know what I wanted to do, I just kind of wanted to, you know, skateboard and play music. When uh, my parents were kind of on me to go to school, do something, you know, you need to get a certificate of sorts, you know, to get a job and, and whatever. And uh, it's kind of job hunting, I guess, slacking off a bit. And I was watching a movie called Sweeney Todd. I kind of thought, oh, that's kind of cool, like shave with a straight razor. Like that's kind of like right up my alley. You know, it's, it's super creative, super hipster or whatever, I don't know. And I decided to go online looking for straight razors. and. Through the stream of the online madness, I came across a whole bunch of awesome, really cool barber shops, old school, traditional, vintage barber shops uh, that you know really stuck out to me. I was like, oh man, like this is really cool because I would always just think you know barbering was kind of lame. What's so great about that? And then uh, I realized that it's it's uh, it can be a super creative outlet for me to express myself through. You know, I get to hang out with friends all day. I get to create essentially art on people's heads, which is great, and people get to leave happy, looking their best. I'm just happy I got to help them with that. The craziest thing that's ever happened to me, I would say I had one of my clients who's definitely near and dear to me. Uh, he's in every week. I have a few guys that are kind of, you know, really adamant about getting fresh. He had a big trip to London and uh, Scotland and instead of going to a barber there because he just didn't know how to find somebody or couldn't trust anybody else, he <laughs> just decided to fly me out and pay for my trip uh, where I did London, Amsterdam and Rome for like three weeks which is awesome. <laughs> the hardest part of owning a business is everything associated with owning a business. <laughs> Especially if you're trying to do it all yourself. Everything that isn't cutting hair or making coffee in this instance, um, or doing the actual craft itself, it's all the, the back end stuff, the paperwork, the ordering, receiving you know, products, stuff like that. You know, tax season rolls around way too quick, always. And the boxes, all the cardboard boxes. Nobody tells you about the boxes. There's just <laughs> so many boxes. And, uh, yeah, it's insane, so. I think old school crafts are 100% coming back to life. There is a huge resurgence in, in just things that are handmade and genuine, um, especially in you know, the barber industry. Uh, it's a huge resurgence in old school barbering. You're going to start to see all these shops just like this, you know, popping up where it's not just a hole in the wall. It's going to be old school, vintage, rustic, industrial looking, you know, places paired with things like what I've done here with the coffee because um, I just love coffee and was sick of all these chain coffee places and I was like, I got to get my own coffee. And so, and you already see them popping up everywhere and we're only on the you know the front line of it right now it's, it's just gonna get bigger and bigger and uh, like for example with Ryan is leather crafting there's two of us sitting here in this small town of like hundred people <laughs> doing like this huge craft movement right now I think everybody just kind of wants to be a 
part of something inclusive and, and genuine. Um, they want to feel like, oh, that's like that's my guy. They almost don't want to tell people about it because it's they just feel like it's you know their club, right? But they also want to scream it to the world. You know, this is my place. You got to check this place out. My advice to somebody wanting to do what I'm doing here or get into this industry or any industry really is there's, there's a market for everyone in whatever you're doing. There's enough people in this world that you don't need to try and please everybody. You just need that, you know. It was, it was said to me by the guy who, who did my website. He's like, you just need your, your 1,000 raving fans and that will sustain your business. That's a small percentage of the world. <laughs> so just do what you want and just do it. Don't wait on anybody, you know, just, just simply begin. And before you know it, you'll be there. And it may seem like so far and unobtainable and out of your reach, but you're not gonna get any closer if you don't just take, you know, one step closer. You know, it might take a lot of time, but you just gotta, you just gotta do it. Don't wait on other people's approval, I suppose. And I'm still having a hard time with this. I'm, I'm always asking people, what do, you, what do you think of this man when I'm doing like a new logo or something? I'm like, is this cool? And they're probably looking at me like, I don't know, man, it's, it's your whatever. And I'm like, oh, okay, maybe, maybe I won't. You know, I'm always in the back of my head, just like never fully pulling the trigger on, on anything. And, and I think you just gotta pull the trigger. <laughs> just, just go, you know? I would definitely still be doing this if I could do it all over again. I love this location, maybe location might change, you know, post up near the beach somewhere. But uh, absolutely, this is 100% an awesome industry to be in. You can be as creative as you want, you have so much freedom to express yourself however you want. Nobody can tell you, other than your client in your chair, you know, what to do, right? If I, we do just gentleman style haircuts here. I don't, I don't screw around with long hair and stuff and, and you know there might be other shops that are people have to tell you how you do your job and, and I don't know, I just I love the freedom that I have and you can take it anywhere you know I can pack up my tools in five seconds and go on an adventure cut hair along the way I can talk to a bunch of different shops be like hey man can I cut here for you know a day and then be happy you know and that's what it's all about that's what this industry is definitely pushing towards as well uh, is just a sense of community in, in the industry Everybody's got each other's back kind of thing. Some people say I can do a pretty good Christopher Walken impression. I need a phrase though, I can't just come up with yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, I could stand here and cut all day long. <laughs> Everyone, they love it. They love me. <laughs> That's too outrageous. <laughs> I don't know, some people say, I've had guys tell me it's horrible and then I have guys like, it's so good. And I don't know, cause I'm just like hearing myself. I can't hear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it's true. It's like, if to do it, you have to like overdo it. But you just listen to Chris Rock and you're like, he is actually kind of just talking normally, like... <laughs> Don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, that's huge. I am so hell-bent on trying to do everything myself and, like, I don't know, prove to myself or people or anything. I don't know, I just, you know, sometimes I just... And that's what I'm also working on, too, is, you know, it's time to, you know, let things take their own route and let people help, I guess. And, uh, and keep your books tidy. Definitely. Definitely keep your books tidy. The auditor will appreciate that. <laughs>
I watched a movie a few years ago called Hector and the Pursuit of Happiness. Uh, and there was a quote from that that really resonated with me. Uh, it, it goes, uh, it's not necessarily the pursuit of happiness, but rather the happiness of pursuit. And I think that just really kind of helps me back down to earth and, uh, and, and just relax and, and enjoy the ride, rather than to always be chasing this unreachable, unattainable end goal, you know. Um, life goes on and it's just about riding the wave, right? 